Hello and welcome. So today we're going to talk about why am I not excited about uh, CitizenCon. You saw it in the thumbnail, right? Um, I'm try. I'm, I'm going to try not to be an ass. Uh, I've already uh, recorded the vid and I'm, I'm a huge ass uh, asshole. Uh, people are going to unsubscribe. People are going to tell me that I'm a fucking retard and uh, that I should play another game because they always do. But uh, yeah, uh, you're going to see. About, uh, this is Citizen Con from two years ago. So 2019, 2019. And you're going to see how many things we actually have in the game uh, now that were announced two fucking years ago that they were uh, apparently going to do for 2020. And I know, I know that COVID uh destroyed pretty much everything i i do understand that but it's still two years and we have pretty much nothing from uh, uh a bunch of things that have said we we have like maybe 10 percent. so yeah we're gonna cut to the intro and we're gonna watch uh the uh we're, we're just gonna watch the clip uh or the whole fucking thing uh so yeah Hello, my name is Grumpy, 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 Tony Z's last one was pretty cool. It's Tony showing Z. you how we're going to have a very dynamic uh, universe on a high level. Uh, so, uh, and obviously the stuff we had with the various things like the Planet Tech V4, Ships, characters, you are. By the way, do not smoke cigars. That's uh, that's really bad for you. Cigarettes, bad for you. Just let me. I'm an idiot. Uh, also, I'm gonna be streaming the uh, Citizen Con uh, with my org uh, on Saturday. So make sure you check it out. I so hopefully you guys got to see some of that, and the marketplace was great. You guys are always great, uh, and um, well, this is the end. Uh, so hopefully we've got something special for the end for you guys. Uh, so last year, at the end of Citizen Con, uh, I had the sort of road to release roadmap. Okay, uh, this is like in between years. We We're going to skip that. Pack. We just want to focus on things that they've promised that they will do in the next year. Is every three months, but the and I know that uh, COVID uh, hits us, so I know that, but we had two years in between citizen cons so Teams let's check it out get 16 experience now is good and then it's just improving as we go on okay um so this is what's coming up next so in 3.8 we are okay. going to have the very first iteration of server-side ocs so Ting. Uh, working okay good now is running socks and you'll understand why it's important as we get into the demo uh, assuming it doesn't crash which you know you never know uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, to let you know so the so it's the first iteration of the server side OCS so we have uh, like server persistence in the session of the server so the server whenever it uh, you know it leaves an area it streams stuff out it remembers the state of all the items and all the stuff that was there at that time, but it won't. It doesn't persist beyond the server session. The bigger thing, which we've talked about in the future, is sort of the iCache, which is the full persistence. Uh, so platform persistence is one other thing that we're putting in the 3.8, which is what was is basically a halfway house to the very full persistence. But the platform persistence is going to allow us to save off the alpha UEC that you've earned also any items or ships that you've bought or rented in the game okay are going to that is in the game yes so it is they're, they're going to get saved off to the platform in the same way that we record all your um, shop cash purchases and so when a new release comes we can re-entitle it back to the account in the same way we do for everything that you do and the the plan with that is to not have to wipe between uh you know, iterative this releases guy. on a major release and potentially even from one release to the next. And, you know, we do reserve the right if there's like a major issue or a major rebalance or we have to redo the database on a, a major release, then at that particular time we may have to wipe it. But in general, the goal is yeah, to okay. let you guys make money in the game, earn things, collect things, and not have it wiped every time we do a new release. So there were two wipes since then. 
Uh, one was like 18 months ago, and so, one was is going to happen now, right? So we're and, and so we're aiming to ship that with that will hopefully be that should be with the 3.8 patch cycle, uh, and now uh, okay. Planet Tech V4, which we obviously sort of unveiled at the beginning, and there was some really cool panels about it during the day, uh, which I think is going to, I mean, just the quality of, the, I mean, not just Microtech, but going back to the old places what? like Daymar. I got to stop it here for a second. Uh, platform persistence. So they're talking about uh, persistence on the uh, planets themselves. And uh, I haven't tested it out. The only thing that I have tested out because I was doing videos, every time I uh, like try to make a video with like a comparison video with uh, uh, ships, uh, I try to park them on Daymar because it's just the closest one and it's sunny and you can see everything. And uh, they tend to uh, be inside the planets. And just like when I come close to them, they just pop out of the ground and flip on their belly or, or, or on their back, actually. And yeah, that's just weird. So it could be just server side. I have no idea. But uh, that's uh, it's working, but uh, not as intended, I guess. RSL and his whole new, whole new world. Um, a whole new yeah, one of the oh shit I just woke up to, which is which we've not particularly managed to show well this morning as uh, the social group gameplay but that is a focus for us to make sure that the FOIP and the VoIP and the group gameplay stuff works well it's important for us to get everybody has a problem with um, parties and <laughs> everybody has a problem with like orgs and shit stuff working for you know as uh, Sean mentioned for the theaters of war but just in general, playing, grouping up with your friends in the universe, doing stuff. Uh, and so that is a focus, and you'll see us iterating on that uh, for 3.8, uh, 3.9, and onwards. Uh, you know, more robust missions. So we've got uh, some stuff coming up in 3.8 that, uh, you know, is interesting. There's, you know, we're starting to introduce AI into some of the missions, like, say, the rescue, the hostage on the 890, which we had in an ATV. We were showing very early version. Rescue the hostage on the 890. Of it, uh, uh, that it will be in 3.8, and there'll be some other ones along that line uh, of missions, and that's multi-part missions, which also what we're showing is sort of an early version of a multi-part mission, what we showed beginning and we're going to end with here. Multi-part missions. Uh, that Bear in mind, two years ago, we just started this video. 3.9.4.0 onwards. Uh, then, uh, sometime uh, around about middle of this year, I think, uh, so full universe persistence. And that is the persistence that allows us to save everything, period. So you can take your coffee mug that you've got in the Carrick and... Because you bought it with real money and it like costs 10 bucks for that. Score on a planet and drop it in a forest, get back on your Carrick, fly away, and someone else could go to that forest and see this, that coffee mug, or you could come back and see it if someone else hasn't stolen it. Uh, and so the, 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 and that, that, that iterates to every, every, uh, every, every dynamic item in the game gets saved off. So basically... By the way, I watched this like two years ago, so I'm just remembering what they've said. We, there, there's going to be more. Save the state. It goes back to a cloud database. It's, what we're calling the iCache. Uh, of course, there'll be some stuff like, you know. iCache. Not, you know, I, we, we want to be smart where like people can't like stack a thousand turtles in a place. So obviously we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some policies on the items. So at some point when we're saving it to the database, we'll say, well, this is a low importance item. There's too many in this area. Uh, so therefore, and this one's been around too long. So we just won't bother saving that to the database and then You'll just sort of be like, oh, you know, someone came along while you weren't there and uh, took the turtle or cleaned it up. Uh, but in general, uh, you know, you it, so the permanent structures. So one thing that gives us is the ability for you as players to go around the universe and ultimately, you know, you want to create your own base somewhere, create your own homestead. You should be able to settle down and put a base there, and it will be recorded back to the iCache. Okay, homesteads. And you can come back to it, and it will be there, and it, it will persist. Uh, and okay. so I think the 
opportunity for emergent gameplay that comes from that is going to be fantastic. Because as you saw with what Tony was doing in his presentation before, we're going to have that. So Tony was talking, as far as I remember, I think he, he was talking like the first uh, uh, iterations of quanta. Dynamic resources in the universe. Yeah. We're also going to persist those. So they'll be finite, so there'll be only so much. Which completely broke trading, just saying. You know, gold or Hadonite or whatever it is on various moons or planets. And as they get mined out, then you'll have to find some other place and move to it. And there's an especially rich seam. I can see a group of players coming, setting up camp there and starting to mine the resources. And then I can see some other groups saying, oh, well, that, that's great. I want some of that. They show up and, you know, you basically have two groups battling out. And then there's a whole business that's going to be involved in you know, supplying more weapons or logistics or healing people or bringing, you know, uh, consumables that people need. So I, I think that... Bringing a Carrick to wherever, because you have a Carrick because you have to buy it so you can revive people. That's, that's fun. That's 3.15 in a nutshell. But there's going to be this, like, dynamic evolving uh, system that will be incredibly interesting and compelling and I'm really looking forward to that and that's enabled by the full universe persistence which is like I said the full persistence of all items ships characters and also persistent tracking of the resources um, and then the last thing two years I, I, I mean just I'm just gonna say two years still no server mashing Still no per, uh, full pers uh, persistence. Like, 30k, we'll lose our cargo. And, uh, like... <sighs> uh, which uh, we won't, I think, get to by the end of next year, but we'll be very close to it. By the end of next year, but we will be close to it. Uh, next year, uh, from, two <laughs> from that perspective, was uh, 2020. Now we are at the end of 2021 or 2021. No server meshing. Is seven. Do I need to pull out the video from like 2014 or 15 when there were like sandworms on Daymar and like, uh, I don't, you probably all saw it. Meshing. And so everything we've been doing up until then, and that's when I think everything fully comes alive, is the server meshing allows us to have a lot more players in the same area. But the, the work that we've done on the uh, kind of server-side OCS, where you can change the point of view of the server arbitrarily anywhere around uh, and save off state is, is exactly what you need for server meshing. Because what happens in a server, if more people arrive, say, I don't know, in New Babbage, and you suddenly go, oh, you know, we can only run 100 people or 200 people or whatever the number we can simulate on the server, uh, and there's now 201 people, you 50. say, okay, I'm going to spin up a second, second server. Here's another view onto New Babbage, and these players are on that. And you just keep on spinning up more to take on the load in areas. And, and Or 30 if you don't want any glitchy and um, glitchiness and lag and, and like stuff like that. Uh, but positional desync, I mean, server, server meshing is not going to solve that. Uh, that's a netcode thing. That, that's... Like, if you go to Arena Commander, uh, there's still positional desync. And, like, that's, that, that's just, like, a server for two people. So, yeah. So that's why we needed the server OCS and the bank calling and the full persistence, and it enables server meshing. So that's the next thing. Once we deliver the full persistence, we're actually already starting to work on the network yeah. side of what we need for the server meshing right now. But um, we're really excited about that because then that's going to allow a sort of dynamic seamless uh, universe that won't have the same player count restrictions. Uh, and by the way, we'll also with, we don't know quite with server OCS what we'll be able to do, but we're going to start experimenting with some player counts in the future and maybe upping it because at the end of the day, if we're not simulating the whole system and it's a, a smaller subset of that, we'll be able to have more players. So, so we'll see in the midterm if we can get more players into a server right now, but longer term server meshing is what's going to allow us to really have a fully dynamic okay, universe. Enough. But two years ago. But yeah, okay, they've done that. But it was like, uh, this video is from two years ago. And then the smaller things that we're going to be working on is, obviously, <clears throat> you know, I've talked about the quality of life. It's an ongoing uh, effort for us. You're only starting to see the very, very beginnings of it. Uh, so we have some dedicated teams that just focus on the quality of life. We have a very, 
what we call the vehicle experience team that we're working on things to improve how it feels operating and, and running a vehicle. Uh, I mentioned that there was a couple of things like the look ahead, some small stuff that we showed in, in the opening, but there's That's a lot the more stuff to come, and also in terms of you know, the feel of combat and all the rest of the stuff. Uh, we're going to be adding, uh, obviously, more loops. More loops, more content. I think that he's going to speak about refueling and salvage now at some point uh, in, in this video. I think next up we've got uh, uh, sort of fueling, refueling, fuel collection. Uh, then it'll be salvage. I watched this fucking two years ago. More content, obviously. Refueling and salvage. There we go. Confirmed. Two years ago. Still not in. Coming with the vulture, but, but refueling? Well, about refueling. Well, we were thinking about... Like, you know the Starfarer, the, like, the worst piece of ship that we fucking uh, did? And I even fucking forgot to, to mention it in, in my worst pieces of a ship uh, 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 video. It's so bad that I completely fucking forgot that it uh, even existed. So, yeah, you know about that? Um, well, you, you remember when we said that it's going to be refueling? Well, maybe it's just going to be a refinery. Maybe we're just going to make a refinery and that's it. Uh, because, like, refueling is uh, awkward for us for some fucking reason. And then open up a bit. We'll see what happens. Uh, all right. So. Excuse me, what? Uh, fueling, fuel collection. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it'll be salvage. More content, obviously. And then open up a bit. We'll see what happens. How big are you, uh, Okay. All right. So. Uh, now we've done that, we're going to head into our demo, but at first let's demo. Just recap. Demo! Great. Uh, and and uh, we'll get a touch I think I remember this. With me? Let me skip a bit. Alright, demo. Pisces. That's a weird skin, but okay. Like, why is, like, even the, hmm, this is one of the gripes that I have with, with, with this game. So, if you look at the uh, logo, why is star not centered above the midline, the, like the midpoint, where the eye, even the eye is not perfectly centered? Like, <sighs> all right. It's still an alpha. So we're on, That's why. Uh, the Microtech <laughs> shuttle to the lab. Excuse me, Microtech shuttle. Microtech shuttle. Yeah. To the lab. I'm so psyched. I'm so excited about this. You know what? For the next Citizen Con, they could just like do. A compilation of everything uh, that they've said they had just hadn't uh, uh, delivered to us, and uh, we will still be fucking excited, and that's it. Can we get the quadrant? I have no idea what he said. All right, and by the way, Glenn is uh, actually on a AI flown ship here. AI flown ship. Now, if this, if this wasn't a test for uh, the uh, Saturday stream, uh, I would like show you how <laughs> NPCs fly on on planets. Uh, I've been scanned on planets a bunch of times, but by, uh, by uh, NPC like advocacy and, and shit. And uh, after that, like a hundred percent of the time. After that, like, they scan me, I'm, like, five kilometers up, and they just roll and go straight into the fucking ground. Boom. Splash. So, and that is something longer term that we're, we're going to be working on, which is AI doing things like taking your shuttle from a space station down to the ground, mm -hmm. or various locations that you could go to without having to fly to you. Why? I mean, it's working already. Why? Yourself. So, think of it as a bigger version of the transit system. I 
I mean, it's not so bad because, like, you. Why would you take a shuttle if you can just go there and yourself? Here's but one of the things that it's the, cool. Know, I think Ian's talked about, we've talked about, is that we want to increase our range of, you know, we have outposts, but they're pretty Correct. small. And we want to have points of interest that you would have in various planets or moons yeah. that you can have mission content in things to do wait uh, this is this not is a sort of bunker of mission and iterate this is a sort of first prototype of that yeah so, so um basically multiple entries multiple exits um obviously with outposts you got one way in one way out uh so for us um from a design standpoint you know this allows us to build these in a modular way so that we can have different entrances different exits different room layouts different mission content associated with it uh from there, you know, then we start looking towards towns and villages. And then obviously we have our, our main cities. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned Is earlier, he playing with sort a game of a pad? prototype, first version of a sort of multi-part mission uh, multi that we've discussed and yeah. thinking about doing uh, in the longer term, not 3.8 obviously, but 3.9 or on beyond that. Of course, it's cold here in Microtech. NPC to just told him hi, hello, okay. So you'll see now that we've entered into the room, the the temperature that the character feels changes and he actually starts returning back to normal. Wait, that's uh he actually starts returning back that's a weird uh, elevator. To okay. I love the 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 pads in the elevator. Maybe I just came too, too late, and we just have these now. But these ones are actually really good. So good looking are. on these. I trust the ID card still works. Willing to say it does. <laughs> is this in the game? Am I just being stupid? Is this in the game? Because this is like another game. Like, what? What is this pad? Like, I've never seen one of those or, or, or one of these missions. I'm pretty sure this is just bullshit. This is just not that, that. This is like another game. This is like Squadron 42 or or I don't know, whatever. And we take a look out the side, glance out the window a bit. When you, uh, out the window right Why is his so head like tilted down? One other thing which we're going to get into a little further, but if we actually take a look outside. Um, so uh, the other thing that we're showing here is dynamic weather. Yes. Uh, and so actually there is a, uh, a ground snowstorm blowing in. Can you look out the window a little bit, Glenn? Or not? Glenn? Glenn, can you Glenn? look out the window? Glenn, show us the dynamic so sensor with your gamepad. Take a look out here. It's where the trees go to the left a little bit. There, so you can see. So, all right, we carry on. So there's a storm blowing in right now. Come to that in a, a bit better. I'm not a huge Microtech guy because I go there just to buy components, but I'm pretty sure, I mean, I did like a uh, low fly over there, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see any movement uh, on, the, on the trees, but all right. Maybe I just didn't see it. So it, 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 it's not a gripe, it's just fine, okay. But uh, the, weather sim the, we the weather simulation uh, takes into account uh, the humidity, yes. the wind. Uh, to set up, so not going to have we've got a couple elements still to come on the fully fully dynamic planetary weather uh which would be volumetric uh, planetary crowds and uh, volumetric ground fog we have a large amount of the pieces in place uh for our weather sims and we'll get into that in a little bit but let's carry on we just got the volumetric clouds for crusader and they are not perfect on with our our mission so we're, gonna, so we're gonna go look for the uh, data center to try and steal the algorithm. Steal the algorithm, okay. So it, it says it in the, the demo, 
or basically in the um, mission briefing that you're looking for server number five. So we'll, we'll be looking around and getting closer and working our way over there. Okay, that was weird. Try not to be too conspicuous. <laughs> And the idea with these kind of missions in the longer term is to you know, have the ability to do like stealth gameplay instead exactly. of combat gameplay, so, uh, solve some puzzles, yes. so it's not just going to be about shooting stealth people all the time. Stealth gameplay. Well, and, and it's something that Tony and you and I have talked about a long time yeah. ago, which is basically breadcrumbs as well, so it yeah. opens up to other aspects. Of course. So we want a sort of combination of sort of the procedural dynamic stuff that would be yes. generated by the universe simulation that Tony was showing earlier plus some more crafted, multi-stage, kind of more narrative missions. Yes. And it, they all get mixed in to give you a, a really sort of nice flavor and variety of things to do. Yeah. So like we need to Vi out variety. a good way. We're going to show, we, we kind of know a good way, yeah. but as a game player, you would actually have to suss this out. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go back here in the maintenance area. Great. Oh yeah, I remember this. In the future, obviously, the AI will have certain stims that they can react to, mm -hmm. um, and you know, audio is one of them. Having certain op. AI reacting to anything. I mean, just go and uh, watch my Headless Horseman video where I just, like, w my organ I just fucking destroyed uh, people. Like, we did two A90 jump missions uh, without any weapons and, like, barefooted. I, I, I didn't have... A, uh, no, it was called a Headless Spaceman. Um, I had no heads. They had no... Uh, uh, <laughs> They had no clothes, and we've attacked an A90 jump and uh, uh, did a A90 jump mission and just like wrecked the NPCs. They were just stationary. Like, I died once to that. And I was pretty much the only one that fucking died. Because they just don't react. They, I mean, just go and watch the fucking clip. It's funny, but like, it's just like, says a lot about the state of the game and the AI. Objects that the pl player places around would be another way to distract AI. By the way, that server was empty. Just, just saying. Alright, go on. Go through the fucking winds. You know, again, there was things like we took the, uh, Glenn's going to take his uh, paw, there's the like multi locks on the yeah. multi-tool, and uh, we can pretend we're going to pour them off, or not. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, this is, the idea is, you know, like... You got to be patient, Chris. I mean, the game is laggy, so when you press 4 to take out your multi-tool, it takes a while, even on an empty server. The, the FPS, like the, the multi-tool has different modes, cutting, could welding, be mining, yeah. could be welding, repairing. Yeah. In this particular case, we're just going to cut the four um, kind of hinges, locks off, so we can take the grate open and get through it. This is in the game, but like, if we and again, this is watch the whole video, the, the smallest things that were shown here are in the game. The the, the Real shit, the, the big things that, like, uh, important things are not. And, like, why would you get excited about, about Citizen Con? It's just a pure load of bullshit, and they're just going to sell shit, and that's it. You know, the whole fucking point about, of Citizen Con. You know, especially with something like... I'm excited, because I'm going to chill with my uh, friends from my org, and just, like, 
<laughs> bash on the citizen con <laughs> with them and just make jokes and that's it make fun of them whether the weather or the temperature it's about taking like the physical inventory taking the things you need taking so the right do things. i need a tool to go and do something do i need to have uh, an outfit that will keep me warm or correct or you know protect me from fire place and I mean, I think even with our combat and everything like that, we want people to actually think about what they need to do first. <laughs> are, you, are you looking for the exit? No, he's looking how to turn that off. No, 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 you, you're on the bottom here. Go down here, it's there. See that square? Move your cursor down. See that square? It doesn't say exit there? Okay, Where's your cursor? It? Oh my god. The mouse isn't working? <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Alright, glance back to crash. That can't be right, right? This is like the, uh, the fucking blue screen uh, while... Uh, I think it was Bill Gates or, or, or somebody was like... Uh, Announcing uh, the the new windows and it was, just, it was just like blue screen of death and that's it. That, that this is pretty much it. Oh, come out, do that. That's one way. There we okay, go. Well done. So that the that's the you know the, as you guys know, there's an inventory. That's a personal inner thought system, yes. which is uh, amazing. Richard, is the personal inner thought with three eight or three nine? Three nine. Three nine. So, the personal, so, yeah, that's sort of work in progress. But the personal inner thought is in three nine, which allows you to access a whole bunch of uh, sort of uh, actions or interactions. Oh, okay. So, that wasn't still in place, but it was, but it wasn't. So, they didn't know how to manage. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. But well, it's still so like. Sort of on you or would be your thoughts. Uh, and so, that's a very early version that obviously for some reason is bugged, but we weren't actually meant to end for up some triggering reason. that. I wonder which reason. So we're looking for a, a data card. We're going to steal. Steal. There's a guard on that side. Just make sure you well. stay out of that way, Glenn. There you go. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Take the data card. You can take that one, or I think he's going to. He clocked one on the desk, I think. Okay. It's nice that the 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 mission itself like tells you what to fucking do because like you know Star Citizen it just doesn't tell you anything you gotta you gotta go to external websites to to understand what's happening and what 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 do you need to do in the game if you're a new player unless you're a fucking retard like I am and uh, have been following the the development of this game for like fucking ten years now. Here to get the other side. And I still don't know everything. Like yesterday, uh, it was the first day that I hacked uh, Kamari. I mean, it's it's pretty much straightforward because it's it's hacking 101 or or tier zero or, or whatever the fuck it, it's called. But like, just like tell us how to fucking do it, Jesus. By the way, one of the reasons why, oh, yeah, there we go. One of the reasons, obviously, why Microtech, they like this planet and they've been cold is to essentially cool all that. Like the first, my first day of uh, playing Star Citizen, I'm, I'm uh, sorry about, about pausing this, but like my first day, like first half hour that I played, I was doing, of course, I was in Aurora and I was doing the box missions and shit and somebody somebody just hopped into my aurora and uh, left uh, i think it was olisar i i have no idea i think i i'm i'm pretty sure i left the door open because i didn't know that, that that's gonna happen because i thought well maybe there's some like security inside your fucking ship like a key or or anything i mean i did know a lot about the game but I, of course i didn't know like those uh, kind of basics right and at one point uh, that happened like half an hour later, and I was there like just stranded. And I was like, "Okay, what the fuck do I do now? I'm I don't have a ship. Somebody just stole my ship." 
and uh, of course F12, and I had to like uh, talk talk to other people in, in, in global chat and just ask them like, uh, plus, uh, what do I do? Oh yeah, you just go and claim your ship. Like, there should be a tutorial. There, there should be something that just like lets you know what's happening. Why is the community the, the tutorial? Like. Uh, yeah. And like even the community doesn't know everything. You you just can't ask ask them for for everything. They need to they need to fucking make a tutorial. They need to uh, make tooltips uh, in uh, in the mission so you can understand what the fuck you're doing there. Jesus. The server farms. The server farms. Yeah. Or weapons, fucking weapons and their DPS and and fire rates and uh, all that stuff. Why do we need to go to Urkel? Why is that not a thing inside? Oh, because all the weapons are changing and it's a place called well. Fuck that. Just make make a thing that uh, uh, when you whenever you change stats on a weapon, it changes uh, uh, automatic automatically automatically. So yeah, I mean, whatever. Yes, it's like a big Microsoft. All right, let's, uh, let's try to get some data. I may need to cut this again, into this like two shorter videos. UI, right? yeah. so, yeah. That's all care. put together by a designer fairly quickly without having to have flash programmer. Let me see how much it's passed. I have no yeah. idea. 26 minutes? Okay. Maybe more. It's probably yeah. half an hour now. Let's get out of here with our ill-gotten gains. Okay, it may be too hot over there. Yeah, because of the servers, so he's just like... Sneaking, stealth mechanics. This looks all right. Yeah. NPCs that right. actually react to you or don't just like pre-fire through a corner into you. Glenn, just pretend that... 2019. Yeah. Uh, okay. You mind telling us what the hell is going on? This looks like a game. Hey, talking to you. This is our project. You can't just freeze us out like this. This looks like a game. This uh, this looks like a single player game. This is not Star Citizen. Not, not that I know of. Like, what is this? Like, NPCs reacting to you, talking to you. Okay. Yeah, okay. It, it is Star Citizen. When I, <laughs> when I saw them, like, just twist around. Yeah, it is Star Citizen. But it, it would be more uh, um, realistic if they were all inside each other. Oh, of course. He knows where to go. Imagine being a player doing this mission for, like... 6,000 AUAC Spending like three hours trying to fucking do it not understanding what to do Ooh, Placement geez. like a boss <laughs> That was close <laughs> You know, let's put it on top of his Okay I'm still not sure if, if this mission is even in the fucking game I, I've never seen it. I've been to Microsack a lot of times. I've only done the 890 jump missions there, and that's it. Maybe it is. Maybe it is in the game. I have no fucking idea because I, I don't know that it exists. But it's probably not. Going there with a shuttle is not in the game. I'm pretty sure about that. Ah, yeah. So, uh, we have non-lethal takedowns now. Yeah, let's get yeah. out. Yeah, it's part of that. Yeah. So melee yeah, this is too complex to be in the game. And it's a lot more than just that, but it's... This is just too, too, too complex to be in the game. Like, 
alarms uh npcs like uh, uh running to, to to like the this is uh, this can be in the game and he's like uh, <laughs> <laughs> he just t- took a coat from the hangar, like that's that's not in the game. It's non-lethal. Take no, down, you'll no, be able to no. To, to knock people out. Knock people yeah. out. Um, New objective: to, uh, escape security. Pure whole, fucking bullshit. Sort of different levels of punch: left, right, block, left, right. It's all actually physically made. Uh, so we grabbed something kind of warm, but we're not really ready to it. We've actually stashed uh, a getaway yeah. environment suit. And Richard, uh, this is in the game, uh, which well, I, I like it. I, uh, I want to bring up to the stage. Although it's pure bullshit if you're if you have a helmet and and like why why the hand? But okay. So Richard, uh, the lead designer on our actor feature team, and I'd like him to talk a little about what is happening right here and the beginning of the active status system that will ship in 3.9. So what hey, you're seeing here is basically an extension of the room system. And the room system contains temperature, wind speed, humidity, and it basically amalgamates all of that into what you're seeing on the HUD at the moment, which is the apparent temperature. So the apparent temperature actually comes in and is part of our player status system. And the player status system is where you start to feel these environments and the actual environments start to play into the gameplay. So you can see here that actually the physicalized wind He's actually leaning into the wind. He's putting his hand up to try and shield himself, but he's not wearing the correct attire. So he's not wearing the correct equipment because he's just basically grabbed the clothes and jumped outside. And as you can see, it's really cold. So he's starting to yeah, shiver. A bottom side here, it is. Yeah, it's like minus, uh, minus 120 degrees Celsius. So obviously you can only survive at like at least two, three minutes in that temperature. So he's actually starting to undergo hypothermia, which is part of our status effects. And hypothermia actually ties into the gameplay. So his heart starts to raise, his stamina starts to decrease. He starts to actually physically start to see, his, the, the, you'll see a whiteout. So he starts to become more sensitive to the light. And his audio will start to come in as well, to actually really sell that your body is shutting down. And the player status system really it just incorporates multiple different things. So hypothermia is part of the temperature gameplay, and you're seeing the cold aspect here. But eventually that will be for heat as well as other active status as well. But you can Good see job, Rich. To the, this is actually in the game. But uh, the thing is, if you have two minutes to survive or less, uh, how do you know where, you, where you're going? Because there's no markers, there's no anything. See, the other value on here that you see is the apparent temperature, but the other value is the body temperature. Now, the body temperature is tracking your internal body. So, and I think, it's, what is it down by now? It's like yeah. down at like minus, no, 33 we, degrees we forgot Celsius. We to put the drop shadow on the, yeah. the thing. And so we're not in this suit. We actually have a suit that we stashed in the cave, which we're looking for. The other thing uh, that you may have noticed if, when Glenn was going to the third person view, uh, but we have, uh, we're working on environmental shader effects. So there is actually, there was snow accumulation on the jacket that he wore. You notice, you go back and look at what it was when he got it and what it is now. Uh, and with that accumulation is meant to be for things like snow, rain, dust, dirt, uh, and that's something that oh, we're there are markers. to have in in 3.9. And so that, really that, that depends them. on the biome, the, the basically your environment. So yes. in the But you will never fucking find them because you got to know the route. But yeah, it would be cool if you had markers. They'll build up over time. Build up. So we better get a warm suit on because otherwise we're going to essentially pass out. And so end this suit is actually cold. So hopefully when Glenn puts it on, you'll see actually that the, it's actually frosted. So you can see your actor's actually shivering here as he's playing. That's in the game, right? That, that is that mechanic and that like thing is in the game, right? Get on. And this suit is, is more is the Caldera suit that we revealed in the character archetype talk. And this is a, an environment suit that's built for these extreme climates. He's really cold. He's really cold. That's in the game also. It would be great if it was in the, in the game because I'm, um, I'm starting to uh, make a video from our org, like a commercial uh, with the Overlord song. You can, you can listen to it uh, on my channel. And like, uh, it would be great uh, having... Uh, 
us setting up, like uh, uh, trying to put up uh, like helmets and shit, but we're getting 3.15, we're gonna drag boxes on top of our heads to have fucking helmets on. So yeah. So you'll see the visors frosted and up. You can see, and it'll this is like getting into your car when it's frozen. It's, okay. it's frozen and you've, the visor's actually frosted up, your suit's frosted up. And as your suit kicks in, this suit has an operating range that can actually survive these temperatures. So yeah, you definitely see yeah. winter right. storm, snow, slush that's going to that's warm in here as it's going out though. It's going to start to get slush and what we're going to see is uh, lesser is tough. And then I think the other person that I'd like to bring up is Mike Snowden, who is the director of visual effects and his team is being responsible for all the environmental weather effects here. And this is what we're doing on the snow side, but it, it same could work in, you know, a desert planet for dust, rain, and we've actually prototyped a lot of this stuff outside snow, but you're seeing the snow has been our, uh, thing, uh, our first example. So That's I don't know if you want right. to talk about some of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, so this is all, the, the main thing about these effects is they're completely uh, data-driven. So we I'll put a lot of time into creating these rule sets. The, the way that we author the effects is completely different. To I mean, this is a game. Th this is a game. The, the thing that we're playing is not a game. Oh, it's an alpha, Grumpy. Oh, uh, actually, it's it's an alpha. For fuck's sake. Anything we've done before, because we know that we can make beautiful looking storm effects. I mean, uh, I'm a YouTuber for like three months, and I'm talking about this game for three months, and I'm already tired of saying that it's an alpha. Like, imagine people that are here, like morphologist or or uh, um, salty Mike or or whatever. Board gamer. Imagine them fucking saying for 10 years that this is still an alpha. Jesus fucking Christ. But the really cool thing about this, no pun intended, is that it, it's literally the data that the planet gives us. So this ties in with the Planet Tech V4, yeah. which obviously we're, we're showing off today. Uh, it ties in with all the active status stuff. So it's like bringing everything together. So it, it, they look fantastic, but they're completely driven by what the game data is. Yeah, the temperature, altitude, humidity, yep, yep, yep. Uh, and and so it's systemic and it's yep. I mean, and, the, and it'll be affected by time of day and other things. Absolutely, so yeah. Great. I mean, so the rule sets are things like temperature, even elevation, wind strength, wind direction, even angle. There's a lot of complexity in the rule set that makes it really easy actually for us in the long term to, to make these yeah. effects across all the kind of hundreds of planets that will eventually yeah, be, be, be exactly. created. And, you know, obviously you can see the effect of the winds on the vegetation. Yeah. Yep. So, and as you see here, we're in fog, you see the snow, our visor is getting, you know, it's like you would be, you know, in a snowstorm. You're Absolutely. Skiing yeah. or out there. Yeah. So we, 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 we stashed the suit, we actually had a rover that we've stashed yeah. those in our carrack. So, so um, we're looking for uh, what, right now. One of the things before we go on too far, the other thing is with the armors, you will run into planets that are outside your temperature range. And uh, so... Camera is still janky. You might last there for 15 minutes, but obviously we want to make sure that it's very lucrative for you to be able to, you know, go in there and, and risk reward uh, gameplay for it. Yeah, so be equipped. That's why you would have a big ship yeah. and, and buy different armor and store it. Okay, so here's our rover. Excuse me? Uh, which we've hidden with a little top. And uh, this is going to... Of course. Cloth mechanics. You know the... Um, what's it called? The armor. Uh, the Lynx armor with the cloth mechanics that just like glitching and sticking out. Yeah. It's going to be a much more... You can stash your rover with uh, with cloth. Larger example of the, the cloth, cloth interaction yeah. system. So yeah, of course, right, of course. Get the top off and get into the rover. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. Of course. Okay, we can drop it now. <laughs> Am I an asshole? Am I an asshole? Is, is somebody okay, going to unsubscribe because of, of this? Because I'm being an asshole? Because, like, if you, if you go... 
if you lived in Serbia for the past fucking since 2012, uh, our government is a criminal government and fucking, uh, I'm not comparing CAG to, to them, but there is a thing that you can compare. And that is that they are taking all the fucking money for, them, for, for themselves and not giving the people anything. And I'm not a leftist, I'm not a rightist, I don't fucking care about that, but like, uh, or rightist, or right winger, or whatever. But like, uh, the things that they've always say, and they uh, said for like 10 fucking years now, almost 10 years now, is that uh, it's going to be better in the next two or three years. The things are going to get better. And they never fucking do. They, they get like mildly better, like... Our average wage is like uh, fabricated and they say that it's 250 euros or sometimes they say 400 euros, but it's not. It's like 150 euros. Like people just work for, for, sh for shit money and like the flat uh, 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 that I'm uh, living in is 300 euros. So like you, you need at least two people working two fucking day jobs to afford a flat in Serbia. And we have like uh, uh, families of like uh, mother, father, grandfather, uh, grandmother, and like two or three kids living in the same fucking apartment and voting for the same guys rooting for the same guys that they're telling them well it's gonna get better two or three maximum four years is gonna get better and like when the when when those uh, uh, years come not, nothing fucking happens and when you call them on your bullshit you're a traitor you're a traitor to your country and that's what i am right now to 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 the uh, star citizen fanboy uh, community I love this game. I want this game to succeed, but what the fuck? Is, is that it? This is, this, is not a, this is not what we're playing. This is, this is from like two years ago. Like fucking six years ago or, or whenever the, the sandworm was and, and like the javelin rack and all that. It was fucking at least five or six years ago. Uh, do we have that in the game? No. Fuck no. So what is this? What, what is the point of CitizenCon? Just fucking tell me. Oh, we're gonna see the future. Yeah, it's gonna get better in two or three years. It's the same with, with my fucking retarded government. And I'm the asshole here. And you guys are gonna unsubscribe. I mean, all right. Or unsubscribe. Or just, like, tell me in... in, in, in I don't fucking care. But, like, you're gonna tell me in, in, in the... Uh, what's it called? The, the, the game global chat that I'm an asshole. You're gonna dislike the videos. You're gonna tell everybody that, that I'm an asshole. Because of what? Like, why? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? This is from, like, two years ago. And we st still don't have, like, 90% of this. We have... Oh, it's windy. I mean, good, good job, Rich. I mean, you, you are doing some valuable shit, and everybody is, but, like, this is a straight-up lie. This is straight-up bullshit. The yeah. path, interacting, the wind's blowing it. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> and the wind itself here, uh, one thing I wanted to call out is that the wind is different strengths depending on where you are. So if you're down in the tree line or in the troughs, the wind is actually it's a lot slower and then as you get more exposed that wind comes out so it really is a dynamic dynamic environment and as you see as we get into here now the temperatures come up the water the water is evaporating from our visor and we have a clearer view but of course the outside of the the, the road they're now swiping the now that, the that's the thing fine all right let's let let's let um sam know that she needs to pick us up his armor is clipping through the movie glass Two years ago, still in the game. Oh, because Moby Glass is not in a flash, and we need building blocks. And why, why, why don't we have it already? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna need a pickup. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, her yep, I'm gonna need a pick up down the bottom of the hill. On my way. Her okay. ship is loading in. All right, good. We actually the, the that breaks in our system because we we have a little background. Well, it's zoomed to the right place, which doesn't doesn't the stuff because this is in server OCS, so we don't have everything all the time now. So when things go in and out, we still got edge cases, and that's one of the issues that we're. We have to fix before server OTS happens, but it'll be fine. Let's 
Also, this is precarious, so make sure you get a little yeah. noisy for Glenn. Whoa. Oh. All right. Yeah, cover the box with claps. Oh. You can see the fog starting to thin out now as we're going further down. That's part yeah, of the yeah. So again. Like as we're further down, it's not quite as thick. The, the, the uh, I, I know. It's shit out of me. All right. All right. Show off, Glenn. All right. There it is, a Carrick. I think it's a Carrick, I can't fucking see him. This is not a Carrick. The fuck is this? This is a Carrick. What are, what are the fins coming out? It could be a, like a... old rendition of the, of the Carrick itself, I don't know. Good job, Glenn. Yeah. I remember when it was almost impossible to get a rotor yeah. into a ship, but now we can do it. It's yeah. great. I mean, you know what? This is cool and all, but a lot of games have this already. And, uh, like... Parking your Ursa or rover or whatever inside your ship, you can do that in Star Citizen. Uh, in um, fucking what's it called? Uh, space uh, Space Engineers. You can build ships that are gonna be like snub fighters for other ships. You can build ships that are gonna be carriers for a bunch of ships, and that's that. That's not a big. I mean. Yeah, okay, it's fun, it's fine, but it's not a big deal. And I know that, like, it was, it, uh, it took a lot of time for them to make this. Like, fuck it. And it's still glitchy, you probably saw the, like, um, he lost the, the whole fucking cockpit and everything when he entered. It's still like that. It's to the left. And oh, you want to? So we're talking about storage. Uh, oh, so these yes. are actually meant to be for suit storage. Yeah. Still kind of early days and stuff, so it's a bit wonky. But we put our suit in there. We need it. It's in so the, the game. Idea is of course, this is in the game. You would have suits and stuff that you would. Two fucking years. Store depending on what you would need uh, on different planets. This sounded gonna, better than it actually sounds. The the doors closing. Gonna crouch that, and I think someone's shooting us from behind. Hey, I got a pretty hefty crime stat. We're gonna have to get out of here. We're being tailed. Get to the turret. This is so cringe. <laughs> this is so cringe. The acting like. Ugh. Okay, it does it's like every fucking game does this, but it's so cringe. Nevertheless. Alright, come on. So this is our, our first iteration of ship AI in, in atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So we are being tailed by Microtech Security because they figured ship out that we AI in the atmosphere. data and we're making a getaway. Yeah. That's the thing. There we go. Alright, come on. To our oh, he didn't drop off through the Carrick. Cool. <laughs> I go. Let's get rid of it. 
Star Wars hit, Star Wars hit, aft hit. Uh, did people complain about this and they took it out? Because this is actually cool uh, to have. And if you could, like, if, if, if there was a slider for it, like a volume sl slider, uh, it would be cool to have. Because, like, in most ships, you don't even fucking know if you're getting hit. You, you just die. Or your shields are suddenly down. And I'm saying this because uh, this game can become uh, over overwhelming. We all have a, already have like a shitload uh, of keybinds on our keyboards, uh, joysticks, and and shit like that. And then we gotta watch if we're fighting. We gotta wa watch the um, distance uh, from the enemy. On it's like a reticle or whatever the fuck it's called, the the red thing. And then we gotta try to go into the pip, and then we gotta watch our MFDs, and it's like, it's overwhelming for mo most players, and that's why most people don't PvP, or don't, like, if we had some kind of, like, warning, hey, you're get getting hit in your ass, or hey, you're, I mean, it probably wouldn't work, because, like, positional desync and all the fucking desync, but still... Port hit, port hit. All right. Last one. Okay. Let me All see right, the explosion. Well, okay, come on, let's get him. Okay, it's it's weird, but it. You see the explosion here, and the uh, uh, wreck that's falling. It didn't just stop midair. It's actually it has like uh, momentum, and it's and it's moving in a direction, which we don't have right now. Okay, last one. Okay, we got one more, right? Was that all of them? No, nope. there's one more. Here he is. Okay. Good shot. Whatever. You gotta do it. <laughs> this is all in the game, of okay, course. On, I mean, no this pressure. is just working in the game. Atmospheric AI. What the fuck are you talking about? It's in the game. Joe, take him out. <laughs> I'm just gonna skip through this. Hey, the video is already fucking hour long. Hey! Carry on with that. <laughs> okay, at least the Karak looks better now. Or is this a skin? This is like... It's, it's a gray box of a Karak, I think. <laughs> He's down there, though, stop. It's it's such a weird looking She's ship. Up. It says flight systems damaged. <laughs> right, but the. All right, hey, guys, come like... on, talk, talk, talk. Do something. It was a spider marker, wasn't it? Okay. Hey. Jump point. Okay. Oh. There we go. Hey. Okay. I don't know what that happened. That... Okay. I don't remember this. I probably zoned out when I was watching this two years ago. Oh, yeah, no no glitches and like the animation is just working. Because right. that's a thing. Do we have the mission now to go to Paris? It should be. It should be coming. Oh, yeah, the, there's another. You don't need to rush, by the way. Glenn. Mission in this whole mission. Ruin station. Hey, Glenn, can you check your um, ruin station? Mission staff. So, I thought, yeah, I told we had the update of the mission. I guess we just missed yeah. it. Anyway, we got, we got, we got the data. We've now told where we gotta go. We gotta go to ruin station. No, in. this is for Twitch. I never did the Twitch uh, missions for some reason. So here we go. So maybe go, this go is in the game. There you go. Show it up. I have no idea. But like most of it is is not right. Like most of the things that quality of life, AI um, in atmosphere, pu putting your helmet on, uh, uh, all of the the like things that make a game a game are not in the game because it's an alpha. 
And this is in right. the uh, volumetric cloud, the yes. space cloud tech. All right, we have. it's an alpha. Same stuff that we're using for Squadron 42 for the coil. But as, uh, as you can see, use of, usable everywhere else. It's completely volumetric yeah. layer, and it's beautiful. And here we're, so we're at the jump point um, to uh, the pyro system. Now, you don't necessarily need infrastructure for jump points, but the more traveled ones are the ones that used to be traveled, which pyro used to be, but not, not particularly anymore, have uh, what we call jump rings around them and they help stabilize the jump point to make for a smoother jump. If you don't have one, then it's more difficult and the entrance is harder or difficult. But sometimes you may want to try a sort of side jump point to get into a system, like if you're a smuggler, because the main ones would be more, uh, you know, essentially they are like a checkpoint. It's like going through a, uh, a port. Of course, it, 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 it is basically a port. So when we're building the solar system, system um, so a Space this is also in the game. You know, so that you can go. Two years travel. later, this is also in the game. Of course. Jump point and one of those jump points that you can go and interact with. You already now, obviously saw this. A, um, She's gonna fly through the wormhole. Stations. Us going in and mine um, with these unique points of interest. Uh, do you guys think we should open it? Yes. I think we should go. Yeah. Let's do it. Magic. Super cool view. Yeah. Okay. Going through so the wormhole. Going hole. through a wormhole is a little bit like riding the rapids. <laughs> you don't really have much. Uh, you have la lateral control. But it's, it's being on a current. Being pushed on a current. So, like, yeah. even if they fucking announced Pyro in this patch, uh, in this patch, in this uh, uh, Citizen Con, it wouldn't matter because they already did it. Like, w w what's the fucking point? They already did that. And, like. And you've got to keep inside. If they. Like, are they going to show us another jump point from Pyro to, uh, to Nyx? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the boundaries of the wormhole, and actually, if Sam gets a little close, they're probably just gonna show us a bunch of new ships that are still not in the game, but they're gonna be in the future. Like the brand new merchant man. Oh, it's coming! Oh, it's fucking awesome! It's been announced like five fucking years ago. See interference on its screens. Don't get me started on the Hall E or the Javelin. Fucking, that, that's that's the thing for uh, the 2012. And of course. Stanton's just going away in the background, and Pyro's coming in here. Yeah, of course. Wormhole, yeah. I have to anticipate. Blah, 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 so she's gonna go through the wormhole. Ah. Yeah, we already saw this, like everybody fucking saw this. Oh, it's so great when it glitches out, but you still ha have to fucking try to maneuver to it. That's gonna be a shit show when it comes into the game. Aero system. The, the other side, by the way, has got an awesome yeah. eye on the side, yeah. It's awesome. It is. It's fucking amazing. Pyro. In the game, of course. Two years. Sam. Sam. There we go. <laughs> no names on the planets. Okay. All right, Ian. Hit it. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. We made it. No crashes. Woohoo! Close one. Close one on the. On the. We made it. No crashes. I, I gotta take a clip from that and like put it in every fucking video when I make it. We made it! No crashes! On the interaction. Good job. Yeah. Good job, guys. There should be a slide that we go to. Not a ship, a slide. Come on. What's the slide? <laughs> there you go. 
Anyway, so in this coming year, um, we were sort of showing you what we're going to do. So we are going to have the pyro system next year. Uh, oh, okay. Obviously. So Carrick wasn't in the game back then. Okay. So we got the Carrick. Pyro <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> Uh, in 2020. Great. Uh, that brings in jump points. We're going to have dynamic weather. Uh, you were going to be, you know, Microtech, you're going to get uh, the planet itself in uh, 3 uh, 8, but uh, we'll be opening up new Babbage in 3 9. I think Microtech was late, to, it wasn't in 3 8. We've got moons of Microtech that come in, I think, in 3 9 2, uh, and we'll be continuing on the uh, development of socks and the eye cache and the persistence. and. It's pretty damn exciting. I'm really, it's kind of coming together. And at the detail that I didn't think anyone thought would be possible. So, uh, I, you know, hopefully you guys liked it. Yeah, I'm so excited to see this in 2020. <laughs> so, so, I'd like to give a big shout out to, uh, you know, oh, everyone Chris. on stage who helped with the demo here, you know, Glenn and Simon. I mean, he, he has such a lovable persona, but like, still, dude, come on. Like, make this happen. Make the game happen. And they just... This this was all about Star Citizen, right? And then they said that they... That, like, they put all the resources into uh, Squadron 42. Like... I don't know. Joe and Rob are backstage somewhere. Thank you very much. Uh, it did a great job. Todd, Mike, Richard, John, who I didn't pull up. He got lucky. He didn't have to go in front of people. It's right over there. Um, also, all, we got, I think there's about 200 developers or so here from the, man, the mostly the Manchester, but some the German office, some the Austin office, some the LA office. <laughs> are, are, are they clapping? So thank you. I mean, to all the really, I'm not doing all the Oh, my uh, fucking the day, God. I get to come. I get to meet all you guys. And very thankful. So okay, that's that's it. Um, let me see if if there's there's more. Oh yeah, there's more. Okay. Looks amazing. Even more fucking amazing. Earth thanks. Oh, what a boys, dude. What game is this? We what? all wonder what's out there. But for me, it was more than that. Okay. stranger in my own world. I set out to find my path. Oh shit, I think at the start I skipped something. Uh, they were talking about theaters of war, by the way. I just remembered that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it now was in this clip. Sucks, and you'll understand why it's important as we get into the demo. Uh, assuming it doesn't crash, which, you know, you never know. Uh, so hopefully we've got something special for the end for you guys. Uh, it was just, uh, I'm pretty sure it was like at okay. the start. More serious but like, about that, so th that, th that's still not team. in the game. Okay, these things are in the game, that's fine. Star Citizen, which is improving but like, as we go on. Um, so, this is what's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was there. I, I don't want to fucking bother you with that. But yeah, I mean, uh, this is the sole reason why I'm not excited about Citizen and Con and why you shouldn't be, because like, so this is a game. We're not playing a game. We're like dogs, and they're just giving us, giving us bones, and we're paying for the bones, and that's it. Like, why is that? Oh, because of the servers. Well, really, really, is uh, uh, you made a sandworm? You made the animations? You made a bunch of shit just to fucking promote the game on Citizen Con, and you just like get, got rid of it at some point because like there's no fucking point in having that. And like, like, 
travels. Every Citizen Con, every time you watch Citizen Con, it's gonna feel like you're playing a real game. And then you're gonna hop in, you're gonna be so fucking pumped up. You're gonna be so excited and you're gonna hop into Star Citizen and you're gonna die to your prospector. You're gonna have boats, uh, uh, elevators glitch. This is just the thing that comes first in mind. So you're gonna be uh, um, caught in, in fucking uh, Grim Hex because uh, like, to, both of the elevators are not going to work, so you're going to have to EVA around and get inside through the other fucking door, spending, on, I don't know how many hours, and then they're going to bring medical gameplay in, and that's going to fuck you in the ass even more. And, like... That's it for today, guys. I, I, I just can't. I gotta eat. I just woke up. Uh, this was me waking up with you guys. I'm so pumped to fucking hop into Star Citizen right now and see all the animations and the NPCs flying through um, atmospheres. So, <laughs> yeah, don't forget to bring a table when you're traveling to space. And ta ta da da ta What the fuck is this? Because this is not a game. <sighs> Love you. Bye. Yeah. Bye.